So apologies uh, on behalf of our Chief Officer, Kath Clark, who's not very well this week, as uh, I'm deputising. Um, so yes, I've uh, worked for Cumbria Youth Alliance for about nine or ten years, and so I've seen about half of these projects that have just been referred to. Uh, and they're amongst the most interesting ones that we do. Uh, we're based in Workington, so West Cumbria is quite a similar area to South Yorkshire in that it did very well with the traditional industries. So we had coal mining, we had steel, we had manufacturing. And once they started to um, decline, uh, I think the general idea was that the nuclear power station, now known as Sellafield, would take up the slack. Um, that hasn't really worked, uh, as there's lots of people who work at Sellafield, but by and large there are people who've come in from outside to take up those jobs. So we found that places like Maryport, Workington, Whitehaven um, become areas of deprivation with estates where we've got a lot of families with sort of third generation young people on benefits, which is what we're now dealing with, and we needed to come up with some projects to try and break those um, cycles. So the first one I came across was an employment project, uh, which, we, which is still running, called First Steps to Employment. And the chap running that sat at the next desk to me, and he used to say, um, well, we're, we're doing individually tailored packages for people, rather than just getting them through the, the bog standard training and work placement process that hasn't worked for them. They're the ones that have fallen through the net, um, the hardest to help, various issues and so on and so forth and, and living in areas of deprivation and families that had low or no expectation of employment really by them. Um, so what did that mean? Well after a couple of weeks we had a lad in who wanted to work on the trawlers. Uh, oh right, how do you go about that then? Somebody who's got no experience of any work, rather uh, not even that one. Um, well he find, found out where to go to get the specific training. The nearest place was Fleetwood down the coast. And then find somebody uh, running a business there who was willing to take him on a work placement, which he did. So he went there and did work placement and the training. And at the end of it, the placement turned into a job. So I was getting the idea of how you do that, but it's individualized. So you're not gonna get um, 10 people wanting to do that. Um, as far as I know, it's the only one we've dealt with. But dealing with a relatively small number of people and targeting maybe 30 a year and doing what do they want individually and then following it through with an amount of money attached to them. So it needed um, a funder that would understand what we were trying to do there and, and how that needed to work. And it wasn't going to look like great value for money in terms of working with hundreds of people but it would be effective for the hard to help, the ones who needed it the most. That project's still running to this day because it keeps being successful and other funders have joined in and uh, come along to support it. <coughs> so the next one I came across was um, moving into the skills area where we were doing, um, using the same methodology but moving it into the world of sport. So this isn't always necessarily people who are talented young sportsmen, but it might be somebody who has the potential to be a groundsman. And if you can find out the right training that will be accepted by the industry, by an employer, and then enter the placement, and again, that worked. And again, we've still got workers today working on um, that sports method because we found that we can make it work and therefore attract other funders come on board as partners. More recently, um, sadly, great epidemic in mental health issues and need for emotional resilience projects to build up people, young people's resilience so that they can get to a stage where you can start to work with them on the employability stuff and, and that all needs doing first. So that's what's currently being funded um, by Coalfields Regeneration Trust. Um, and that, again, is working very well. We've just had the, the first cohort of people through and starting the second one, demand outstrips supply. So everything um, for the future looks as though it's going to be more and more within the health realm because if we can't address those health issues, particularly the mental health issues, 
we're not going to be able to keep feeding people into these projects because they're, they're just not capable, they're not ready to do employment and skills projects. So that's where we're at. I've forgotten to click this. These are Kath's slides, not mine, so if you've got any questions, um, address them to Kath. Yeah, we're working in, in all the schools as well. Um, because of the raising of the school leaving age and the, the rising sort of alternative education provision, we've found that there's a route in there to working within the schools um, to try and start that process as early as possible and just finding alternatives that work um, for these young people. So things like Duke of Edinburgh, uh, the Cumbrian Award, which is similar, and ASDAMs, which are more accessible. Emotional resilience, right. So the big emotional resilience program at the moment, so although we again have, have started something which is becoming bigger, it's dragging in more and more partners um, as everybody can see the need for it and attracting more and more funding. So it's now funded by lottery and the county council on the basis that it's going to keep young people off the CAMS register. Uh, so again, we have done not just a project with funding from Coalfields, but um, working with us and as a strategic partner, developed something that um, is more and more needed and will be more and more part of our provision in the years to come. These are just a range of other things we do which are not directly relevant to the day. Um, so there is the, the summary of work done with projects with not just funding but strategic support from a partner, um, Coalfields Regeneration Trust. 145 young people supported them to work on those projects, which I think <coughs> speaks for itself as the ultimate outcome. Um, the data that's provided by Coalfields um, goes beyond just being a funder. And because we are also a membership organisation for youth groups within Cumbria, we can refer people who need support uh, to Coalfields as one of our strategic partners, and that's also uh, increasingly important. So one of the um, partners in the Emotional Resilience Project, uh, together we, uh, Female Gym, has recently be fund been funded in its own right to run their own project, and I gather there are two more in the pipeline. Uh, what comes next, as I say, is mostly going to be the emphasis on mental health. Every time we put on one of these workshops, which we're doing more and more frequently, it fills up as soon as we publicise it. Uh, parents want it, uh, professionals want it, everybody wants this training. So a big thank you to Coalfields Regeneration Trust from Cumbria Youth Alliance.